the best bottle of wine mm -hmm. under thirty dollars in Australia that we tried yeah, over fifty tried, episodes, yeah. and we took advice from Dan's. We took advice from hundreds of listeners. We took advice from friends. We took advice from fellow sommeliers in this price bracket. Master sommelier Carlos Santos. What is the best bottle of wine under $30 in your opinion in Australia that we tried on God's Home Season 1? Mm. Have another sip of the... Uh... Ooh, some last minute. I did not expect this. We, we are, are building, building drama. drama. Hello and welcome to the finale <laughs> of Got Some Season 1. Um, for those who are watching this on YouTube, uh, if you're listening to this in the podcast form, our favourite form, potentially, uh, thank you. But check out our socials. Carlos and I have dressed, dressed up for the occasion. To yep. be fair, you're always dressed up for the occasion. Um, you always look nice. You've always got a nice aesthetic. Thank you. I look like a so street rat. So do you. No, so I look very so casual. You. But, you know, it's meant so to you. show off. The dynamic difference between the two of us. A master sommelier, Carlos Santos, myself, Angus, now a WSET level two Whoa. with merit, um, achiever. I should have worn mine pin. Um, but we are here in uh, white shirts, uh, a tie and a bow tie because this is a big moment. Um, it feels like it's been building for a while. Uh, mm -hmm. Carlos and I met over a year and a half, a year and a half ago. Yeah. I discussed this um, idea for a podcast with you. We tried the Jim Barry Watervale Riesling in our that first... That was the first episode. But before that, remember which first oh. wine did we have at the wine shop? City wine shop, actually. Yes. Melbourne. In Melbourne. Yes, we met for the I first time. I remember the bottle yeah. of wine. Um, I do too. A Conclilla. Clonakilla. Clonakilla. Yeah, very good. <laughs> um, and yeah, we should, we've become yeah. mates since uh, we've known each other 18 months. Um you know, we're, it's been an incredible year. We have to say a huge thank you to Dan Murphy's. Uh, Carlos and I are unpaid for this podcast, but the money that they have graciously put into this podcast has allowed us to be able to buy the wine, to be able to be in this studio, which costs money. Um, you might have seen, if you look on Instagram, um, the previous studio actually cost a lot of money to be in because we had to hire it by hour and it was expensive. Um, so a big thank you to Dan's for supporting this uh, podcast off the ground. Uh, next year, uh, you know, we are looking for new sponsors. If you're interested, make sure you hit us up. Um, we've got some pretty cool stuff planned. But mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk about what this podcast will be next year uh, in an episode coming out in January, a bit of a trailer of season two. But mm -hmm. for now, Carlos, we are focusing on three very important glasses or bottles of wine uh, and three glasses that will be put in front of us. Um, we did have different top threes, mm -hmm. uh, but I think we need to focus on the master sommelier's choice. A master sommelier has picked his favorite three from over 50 episodes of this podcast, under $30. They are displayed beautifully thanks to our mm -hmm. friends at the Wine Cellar Company in Queensland. Um, we're going to tag them below on our show notes. If you're watching this, you're pretty impressed by the display that is in the studio and will be an ongoing display into 2023 in season two. Yeah, that's a cool uh, tree bottle, but imagine that on an old wall with a thousand bottles or a hundred bottles. And or, that's like, pretty cool. Solid oak. Yeah, yeah. It's it's um it's fantastic, and he's a Patreon member, and uh, and uh, he sent this through because he loves the podcast so much. Very cool. And um yeah, to Kevin and his team, thank you um, again. Let's do this. Yep. We're going to open up the Very three excited. bottles of wine. We have chilled our only white wine, the cat, the Nostru Caracante, the Sicilian uh -huh. uh, Cortez wine. Um, yep. We do have our little tasting notes on a Carlos. Yeah. Um, oh, very cool. Yeah, beautiful. So we had. Uh, We'll go through that later, I guess. Yeah, very, very cool. I'm happy to uh, try this again. Nicely chilled. Yeah. Our second then... or Carlos's second choice uh, is the SC Pinel from McLaren Vale, the Tempranillo 2019. Beautiful. That's going to be there. And it's going to be tough to beat. It's been the conversation of the podcast. I've seen people tag us consistently. I'm trying this bottle. It's our most listened to episode by like 30%. Nice. So people have found out what our favorite bottle is so far. The Chateau Holmadrac 2017. They went back and it and is the 2017, not the 2018 vintage, which is out now, which is equally as good. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be tough to beat. But yeah. Uh, yeah, we are excited to once again, because it's been months between, mm. especially the SC Pinel. It was quite long, yeah. Um, but the Catacante is our newest addition to mm -hmm. the top three. Uh, I'll let you open them, Carlos. Yeah, awesome. There's two that require a cork, which is always a good sign for a wine under $30. 
we are going to try, we're, you know, if you're watching this on YouTube, we're magically about to go to all three bottles or all three glasses filled. Let's start off, Carlos, with our all number right. three or your number three pick. Yeah. The Nostru Caracante from Italy, which really surprised you. Yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely. I mean, from from the first time and uh, I mean, still now you, you have a nose. It's like it's not your obvious Chardonnay. It's not your obvious Sauvignon Blanc. It's not your obvious Riesling. And that's why I like it. There's a really, really strong sense of minerality and saltiness in this wine. So, you know, and even like a volcanic smoke uh, notes to this wine. I think the big point of the time we tried this for the first time mm. was you'd never tried this grape style for the first time only by itself. On its own, yeah. And that was what was so surprising for it to make your top three. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, look, it's because the wine is uh, it's Sicilian. Um, so we are in, uh, yeah, volcanic soils. Uh, and yeah, typically these this wines will go in blends, Caricanto, Grillo, uh, and others. And, uh, and it's just interesting because it's, Again, it's not your obvious bottle of wine. And uh, try it on its own was interesting to start with, so that straight away captivated me. Even though it's a Cortese, be aware some of, some of the sommeliers will be, oh, but it's Cortese. Cortese, yes, Cortese is a grape from Piemonte, but uh, in this case, it's the producer name. is Agricola Cortese. So the grape variety, yes, Caricante. Um, so really cool. I mean, like... It's if it this smell like if I were if I close my eyes and I would smell this and try to guess where it came from, I'm not sure if I would go to Sicilia and Caricante 100. percent Oh, as if it was a blind tasting, it would if be. If it was difficult. a blind tasting, oh yeah, very difficult uh, because it's not something you try. Uh, it's not a super classic wine, basically. Um, but that strong sense of saltiness and minerality, I would be torn like almost to. Uh, Rias Alberino. Alberino, very good. Yeah, 100%. 100%, very good. Yeah, like I would go towards that sense, you know, wine that is really on the coast, influenced by the ocean. I think it smells better than even uh, when we first tried it, so oh. I'm, I like it. Yeah. It is the same vintage. Yeah. Try it I on like the palate? It. Yeah. Mm. I think it's interesting, you know. And then again, it's $16, which um, we are halfway on the budget. Is that savoriness, almost a little tea uh, note and uh, herbal at the same time? There's a slight bitter root. Um, it's very, I think it's very cool. You know, I would, I would happily open this bottle of wine as an aperitif uh, with, uh, you know, with craft salad, with um, something fresh, prawn salad, craft salad, you know, uh, seafood platter. It's pleasant. <clears throat> it's really good. Yeah. So mm. it's, I mean, last assessments of it, you said that it yeah. smelt a little bit different. Um, are you seeing any sort of change in your perception of whether you, I mean, could it be a number one wine? And, and you know, make sure you dress this up. We are building um, the drama. Yeah. Uh, look, I think, uh, no, I think I will, I mean, well, I will have to try the other uh, two now. You know, Now he's learning. Two days a day. Yeah. Two days a day, right? We have the three uh, back to back. Side, side by side. Side so, by side. I think it will be interesting to to try them. At this stage, it's still number three. It's the first one we're trying, so mm. starting from the end. Let's uh, thank our second winery and producer, the SC Pinnell in McLarenville, yeah. South Australia. Um, I hope uh, that you guys, and they do follow us as well, so thank you very much for They like a lot of our posts. So nice. to the SC Pinnell crew, um, obviously this is a completely independent choice, um, but we love that you've been interacting with us throughout the year since uh, your episode about six months ago. I haven't tried your wine since, um, but, you know, I've got a super soft spot for South Australia in my heart. Um, it's probably a place that I you know, plan on one day retiring or after living there and, and having family there. So uh, very excited to see this in the top three from a master sommelier's pick out of 50 episodes. Um, just a bit of gratitude to mm. them. But yeah. um, let's Cheers. try this on the nose. And assessments. I mean, we should be assessing the appearance as well. But. I really like it. I, um, I. Yeah. Can you tell me why you like it? I really like it. It's like a concentration of fruit. And remember, one of the episodes that we did a few weeks ago, uh, or it may have been last week, the uh, um, the wine uh, from Mark the Vas Felix. Yeah, yeah, the Vas Felix Filius. You know, which was much more fruit uh, yeah. driven straight from the get go on the nose. 
while here there is a little bit more earthy, there is a little bit more, it seems either more development uh, or more complexity, if that makes sense. So it certainly I smells more concentrated. Yeah, more concentrated. Um, a lot more black fruits. But something, something very interesting there that I really like is, yes, definitely more black fruit, definitely more concentration, definitely yeah. more... Um, spiciness as well but it it seems riper but also more complex i would say while the i think the vast felix was broader and more uh exposed straight from the get-go maybe the wine was open as well a little bit uh earlier from from memory because we opened it as soon as we arrived and then we tried a couple of other stuff but um nevertheless i, I really like the concentration on this wine I'm looking forward to yeah, seeing this. I haven't sure. tried this in a long time. I think it's intriguing. You know, it's uh, what I like about it is that it's intriguing when you smell. It's like it's not as obvious as you know many of the the South Australian wines that we try. That is like obvious bunch black fruit. This is it's, there's something even in there that's like make you go back to the glass and make you think. And it's like, is it red fruit? Is it black fruit? Is it ripe? Is it just ripe? Is it? Uh, and ripe is it makes you think a lot more i think and that's why i really liked it because it's intriguing and it's for me it's, um quite uh quite complex and um i've just had a sip of it yeah. um how do you find mm. this might be the evolution of this podcast mm. and you're know, sitting next to you for Man, a... it's good right i don't remember i remember being very surprised this made mm. your top three this was six months ago right mm ish when this episode came out i can now appreciate that mm. complexity you speak mm. about yeah and off the nose that concentration i couldn't differ between like a you know a barossa or a, or a mclaren val shiraz mm. but here i can mm. see that complexity on the palette which i don't think i appreciated back then yeah because that's a fair few episodes ago it's a lot of knowledge i've since done a wset level yeah. two course um yeah this is this is a great yeah. bottle of wine yeah. this is a, i I promise you, even today, I was like, God, I'm this, I can't believe this made it. And now I get it. Yeah. It's creamy. It's juicy. It's um, it's on a palate, again, it's like you feel the tannins, but it's not overly then. You feel the acidity, but it's not mouth-watering. It's not under, under then as well. Yeah. Uh, there's that slight fresh uh, bitter note, almost a crushed stalk or something that, that gives a sense of freshness and longevity on the palate. You keep tasting... Um, the red fruit, the sour sherry, the raspberry uh, on a palate alongside some riper black fruit. Um, I, I, I think is I think is great. I think is a I think is yeah definitely a complex wine uh, that we've tried. Uh, one of the most complex wines that we tried, even though you know is under thirty dollars. Yes, but it's just it's just really well made. So when you think about, for me, if you put in context uh, the bleak, right? Balance, length, intensity, and complexity. Balance, Ooh, sweetness. Balance, length, intensity, and complexity. complexity. The bleak. Right. The so bleak. So if you, every time you taste the wine, if you go through through those, you know, those components to access quality, and you think balance, sweetness, acidity, body, alcohol, and tannins. I mean, here... So the balance is just really nicely then. I mean, the acidity is refreshing, is there, is present, is pleasant. Uh, he has that light uh, crash talk that brings that sense of longevity and freshness. And then the tannins are firm but silky at the same time. They're present, you feel them on the gums, but it's they are not unripe, you know what I mean? It's like it's it's combined really nicely with the acidity. The alcohol is present again, but is really well supported uh, by the acidity and the tannins. So it just feels it just feels right. There's a sense of creaminess, which may be from uh, a touch of uh, oak aging, you know, like smoothing the edges of on the acidity and the tannin even more. Um, it's just an overall, you know, really well done wine. I think it's smart. It's and it's under thirty dollars. It prolongs quite a few seconds on a palate, not overly then. I don't think it's the most complex wine in the world, the most long, you know, longest wine in the world. It is not. I mean, it's a bottle of thirty wine, thirty dollars uh, at the end of the day, but but it's still, you know, it's nice and fresh, and you keep tasting the fruit for quite a few seconds. So it's, I would say, medium plus on length. You know, intensity. So that's good. Intensity is pretty intense. Yeah. Uh, pretty intense on the nose, on the palate. Um, and it's complex. That's the thing. It's complex. That's the last part of the uh, bleak. It's complexity, and uh, it is complex. The, and the so you want fruit, that. You want good balance. Fruits. You want long length. Yeah. You want not intensity doesn't have to be high, but you want to 
judge intensity. But for now, you know, congratulations, the SC yep. Pinnell. Yeah. It's going to be tough to beat. <clears throat> In front of us now stands the current number one. This was uh, this is Carlos's top three. It does differentiate between my top three, but we do both agree that up until this point, the number one has been the Chateau Hormodrac. It's been there for about six months. Um, the vintage that we are going off was the vintage that we tried um, all those episodes ago, the 2017, the 2018 vintage is now available and it's just as good, if not potentially mm-hmm. even better. Um, this was... This is, can I, I, tell me I'm wrong. This is just such a great introduction into what Bordeaux can be. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, the very, very beginning at the very entry level, I would say. And that's um, crazy because yeah. it's so good. Yeah. And this is just where it starts. So when you see people go, you know, French wine, maybe you get a bit patriotic, you like Australia does great wine, which we mm. do. Mm. Um, yeah, this is definitely a great introduction into what Bordeaux can smell uh, and taste like. And uh, I'm going to get it on the nose again. I've yeah. had it recently, so yeah, I there it is. Beautiful. Yeah, it's it's you know, uh, and it's very interesting because we do not have um, a, a Pinot Noir, for example, in mm. the in the which would have surprised me. You know, it could be, but then again, Pinot Noir to make a Pinot Noir and not to be on the top three uh, and the thirty dollars that is at Dan Murphy's because Dan Murphy's obviously they have access to a lot of wine to have in every single bottle of shop or any single bottle around the country. And also just to to that point, mm. Dan Murphy's did give us the option of and everyone the option of having good wine at a cheaper price because mm-hmm. they can buy so much mm-hmm. of it. Yeah. So we do – that's why yeah. the selection of yeah. wine made so much sense for season one of this podcast. That's right. Because we are getting quality wines at a price that we mm-hmm. wouldn't normally get because they can buy so much of that's, it for their hundreds of stores. Yeah, exactly right. Um, that's it. This has been just – I mean, the nose on this – Wine is just so fantastic. Yeah, and that's I know for a guy who deals with thousands of dollars worth of wine every day in work, um, yeah, selling it's... and working with clients mm. and in a restaurant, this for you is like you know nothing. I think but... it's a baby Bordeaux. You know, it's baby a, Bordeaux, a baby Bordeaux. Oh. Because it's uh, it's yeah again again again. <laughs> Thirty dollars. Uh, you know, Bordeaux can go for. 500, 600,000, 2,000, you know, if you have a Petruzzi, yeah, it's 10,000, et cetera. But, um, but this is a $30 bottle of wine, 2017, a little bit of age. It is a Omedoc, Cro Bourgeois. So that classification that did not made it to the 1855. But then again, that classification of 1855 has never changed. So Chateaus had to kind of rebuild the reputation and rebuild different communities, if you like, of chateaus in order to have their wines seen. And uh, Cro Bourgeois is one of those classifications. So, Are you saying, when you say Cro Bourgeois? Cro Bourgeois, yeah. A, yeah, so Cro Bourgeois is what yeah. we would read on the back. Because we've Cru. been searching for how to get that on subtitles for a very long time. <laughs> Cro Bourgeois. 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 Uh, Bourgeois. Yeah, I know, France. I'm, I, I, I'm butchering it, but I'm saying how Bourgeois. we would say How you got Cro Bourgeois out of that is Cru fantastic. Bourgeois. Well, I, I lived in France for some time, so okay. No, I love it to learn French. So, oh, you know, the, you know, uh, me me parle uh, petit français. <laughs> Perfect. I speak a little bit of French. Um, let's get into this glass. Yeah, it's a pleasure always to. This is the third time now on the podcast we've uh, had the pleasure of assessing mm. it. I mean, it's my second sip of the uh, Chateau Hormadrac, and it's wonderful. Um, I, you know, I don't think this episode is going to have any great surprises or spoilers, mm. but, um, you know, let's just talk about why this, I think, I think we have spoken about it. I don't know what much more there is to say, Carlos. Yeah, no, I think it's pretty good. It's, um, would you, uh, out of the, all, out of the, all of the ones we tried, um, I, I still think, yeah, this is, um, it's complex on the nose. There's that earthy, leathery. It's a little bit more exposed than, for example, the, uh, Tempranillo was, uh, again, natural cork, but also a little bit more age, as we said. Uh, and right now, it's showing it's showing already tertiary aromas, that mushroomy, that graffiti. Actually, that's really good, the graffiti, like pencil shaving. Smell, Love smell that you just that. gave yourself props. Smell, uh, you know? <laughs> it's really good. Graphite, in, hey, that's really good. Really good as in I... I no, that's <laughs> How not what good I'm, am I? Talented <laughs> graphite. That's if not, you aren't tasting lead pencil, you ain't a master song. Good that I, good that I remembered to say <laughs> that because... I'm smelling it and I'm like, ah, yeah, that's, you know. No, I get it. Um, Carlos, I am going to take the glasses away from us. Mm -hmm. 
I am going to get you to put and pick your favorite, the best bottle of wine mm -hmm. under thirty dollars in Australia that we tried yeah, over that fifty we tried, episodes, yeah. and we took advice from Dan's. We took advice from hundreds of listeners. We took advice from friends. We took advice from fellow sommeliers in this price bracket. Carlos is just doing one last assessment. Fair enough, and I love I that about you. the first of the three, yeah. Master sommelier, Carlos Santos. What is the best bottle of wine under $30, in your opinion, in Australia that we tried on Godsom Season 1? You have another sip of the uh, um, sip and Oh, shit. You have another sip oh of the Oh, my sip gosh. It's pretty good. That's the Chateau Hall. It's pretty good. Oh, some last minute. I did not expect this. We are building drama. My man's learning about podcasting. <laughs> but the answer will be the same. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, much, it's much nicer than I expected mm. and remembered. Well, it's hard. Now you have to, if you go back to the white, you have to, you, you do have to have two sips because obviously you Just went clean from palette, it. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to go back to the white. I know it's between the SE mm. Pinel and the Chateau Hormadrac. So I'm going to take, it's like a fish, like mm. Rexan. Give it, give it up. And it's a beautiful remember. label too. It's a beautiful label. Nice yeah, uh, Nostru nice Caracante stays at number three. Mm. It comes down to two. What a drama-filled episode of God's Song. You don't find this anywhere else. Production value, super high. It costs money to have this drone underneath us, if you're wondering. Carlos, the grab the bottle the, um... that you think is the best in Australia. Mm, yeah, we'll have to go. We'll have to go with the... Um, we'll have to go with the other one. I mean, uh, uh, yeah. Say it. Um, so the best bottle of wine that we've tried uh, in the podcast in this year of uh, uh, God Som, yeah, it was the Chateau Madrac 2017. I mean, yeah, I think, I think that's a very good representation of uh, of uh, a Bordeaux. At, the at baby Gabon. Bordeaux. As soon as we tried this bottle of wine, nothing has compared mm. to it since. And I yeah. mean, honestly, I mean compared to, yeah, because they're different. It's a different wine. Yeah. But nothing in compare, like nothing also at the price point has just delivered. Mm consistently because we've opened three bottles i've opened two of these by myself yeah and every time the consistency of this has been mm. bang on we always bring it to the uh, devla city classes as well now and and we keep bringing it because it just feels like every single time we open it is consistent that's very important as well until then i guess we have to i think did i finish it no uh i need a little bit more need a little bit more and as you should all right cheers thank Salud. you